My uh, psalm for this video is Psalm 29. And uh, it's a very powerful psalm, uh, and not a long one, so I'm just actually going to read it. A psalm of David. Honour the Lord, you heavenly beings. Honour the Lord for his glory and strength. Honour the Lord for the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. The voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty sea. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord splits the mighty cedars. The Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon's mountains skip like a calf. He makes Mount Hermon leap like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with bolts of lightning. The voice of the Lord makes the barren wilderness quake. The Lord shapes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists mighty oaks and strips the forest bare. In his temple, everyone shouts glory. The Lord rules over the floodwaters. The Lord reigns as king forever. The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses them with peace. I've been thinking quite a lot and talking on some of the recent videos, going through the, the some of the Psalms, particularly from about Psalm 20 onwards. And I've been often saying how uh, there's so much, particularly with David's references in the Psalms here to God being a protective uh, God, a God who's a rock, someone who's uh, a stable foundation for us. Um, this whole thing that we can look to God for his strength and support and uh, safety. We can look to him as a shepherd. And there's, there's certainly a reference here, you know, at the very end of verse 11, the Lord gives his people strength, the Lord blesses them with peace. Um, there's, there's certainly something about God's support and, um, and reassurance. But there's so much in this psalm too that really helps to underline in big, bold letters, in, in dramatic statements, in uh, uh, there's so much drama in this psalm about God's power. And uh, there's this sort of earth-shaking uh, power. There's this you know, bolts of lightning flying around and drama and thunder and, and uh, really um, it, it's, the, it's the thunderstorm in the desert kind of stuff. It's the, the, the very dramatic power that we see in the natural world that is really uh, spelled out so clearly in these verses. And I, and I think it's quite important sometimes to have that strange tension between recognizing you know the, the god of psalm 23 the god of, of of comfort and strength which which people love receiving that sense of reassurance this god that we can cry out to on those great days when things are victorious and wonderful the times when everybody's around us and we're feeling really under pressure but but it's not just about um you know this this people-focused um, approach to God, that, that that's not the end of it. There's a recognition that God is mighty and powerful and strong. And it, in a sense, Psalm 29 is, is almost explaining the wildness of God. It's, it's this, this recognition that if you're out in the middle of nowhere and there's a dramatic storm, if you're in a situation where the forces of nature seem to be quite overwhelming and you're by yourself and you feel like a, a tiny speck on the landscape. You get a sense of proportion. You, you, you start to lose the, the focus about just me and thinking, wow, this is incredible. This is awesome. There's, there's a sort of a jaw-dropping experience, you know, when we go and, and remind ourselves of, of you know splendid scenery huge mountains wild seas you know all these things that they kind of somehow put the human experience into some kind of proportion and i think if you're like me and you've grown up a lot of your life in in a, in a large city and you've spent much of your uh, your days in a in what is effectively a very controlled environment around buildings and you know and um developed roads and you know living in uh kind of densely 
uh, populated areas, we often kind of forget that perspective. It's something that we, we can lose. I, re I remember uh, living in London, you know, where I lived, you didn't really get that big a skyscape, really. I th you know, you, you saw quite a lot of buildings around you, but where I was living, it was relatively flat. And I even noticed the difference when I, when I moved to Bristol, where I live, it's up more on the, the, the sort of brow of a hill, really. And I noticed how open the sky was in comparison, you know, and I, I really loved seeing the clouds and the stars. And sometimes, you know, on a, on a quieter evening, just looking up and you get this sort of beauty of expanse. Um, and, and I think these experiences are very important for us. They remind us. Uh, of God's power, and I, uh, and I've had nothing like sort of standing in the middle of the desert somewhere, you know, with these storms. But I remember a friend of mine who used to live in the Middle East, talking about his experience of going out into the desert, way into the desert, you know, just for some time with God, and you really get this quite overwhelming sense of the sometimes the silence, sometimes just the sheer uh, darkness of the sky, and. We see that with Abraham. Abraham had this encounter with God and he looked up, God said, look at the, the stars of the sky. And, at, you know, at that time, there wouldn't have been much light pollution. It would have been in the middle of, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And uh, it would have been very, very visible to see a lot of stars, I'm sure, uh, far more than might be uh, visible from somewhere like the UK with lots of lights around. And so I just feel like, this is great just to look at the psalm and remind us of the majesty, splendor, and power of God. That's what it's all about. It's, it's just trying to get us back to that focus again. So my prayer today is that we'll be freshly reminded of God's power, of his majesty. We would get proportion again. That the, the smallness sometimes of our, what feel like big issues, the 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 insignificance sometimes of our great things we feel we've achieved at times. All the, all the things that sometimes feel, you know, so important on the human scale, that somehow we would get back to a, a proportion that, that, that God's vastness, his majesty, is so much bigger. And I pray that you'll have that revelation afresh, that maybe God will take us to some place or some experience um, today or this week or this month or maybe sometime this year and we will just be reminded afresh of how great God is.